How about I unmute? One day I don't hit the live, the next day I don't hit the unmute. So, about the Paul Grice. You know, he's the guy that's in the affidavit of probable cause for arrest warrant. And he supposedly that was one of, the, one of the guys that was there in February and one of the guys that was there when Veronica and Jillian was, I'm going to say taken at that point from that spot. Because I believe that's what happened from that point until we get everything out there. But one of, one of the guys he works with actually messaged me today and then called and said he's not running. He's been at work. So I'm going to leave it to law enforcement. You know, they know what they're doing. Um, it was law enforcement that wrote that probable cause warrant. So with that being said, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about Paul Grice for the simple fact that Ellie obviously knows what they're doing. They put him in the probable cause. So with that said, I'm going to leave that part alone. I do want to see if I can present something that really, really has got me going today. Let's see here. Uh, still learning how to do a lot of this. And I was I watched several videos today. It don't seem like I'm going to be able to do it. I wanted to show you some photos. Because there's one that I got that is very disturbing. And actually, to be honest, pisses me off. So, let's see here. Okay, I'm just going to read it off of, off of my photos because I saved it. You guys can hear me now, right? Everybody can hear me. Yes, thank you to the team that's here. Much love. And to everybody that's watching, much love. Yes, let's keep the victims, keeping the victims and their family members and friends in my heart and prayers. I'm going to put this, what I'm fixing to read to you. I'm going to actually, my eyes still real blurry. And for some reason, I want to sleep, but I'm making myself stay awake. So this live is not going to be real long tonight. Give everybody a chance to talk if they want to talk. And just going through here real quickly to make sure that everybody is doing all right. There's nothing that I need to address. It's a get go. And if Natalie's in here, I don't see you yet. You're still not showing up for me. And I'm looking for you. Gonna have to figure that out. Okay. I'm almost, I'm gonna make it quick. I'm going through these comments real quick. I am feeling better. The eye's gonna heal. It takes a couple days. And then May 1st, I get the other one done. And I'll be like new. My husband won't keep telling me it's gonna turn me in for two 30 year olds. So. I told him, you can barely handle me. You think you could really handle two 30-year-olds? I don't think so. Go ahead and try. I know he's always joking. Okay, so, man, what goal does this person have? Like, who in the hell does she think she is? Somebody took it upon themselves today to go to um, Heath Kelly's Facebook, okay? And... I will share this in the community page, but went to Heath's Facebook and the person's name, person's name I'm going to type right here. So if you see this person, bring her to my attention. Okay. Just seriously. I don't care if you got to put sirens, whatever. If this person comes in here, let me know. But we're going to put the, the name here just so everybody can see it. And then I'm going to read her comments. That she wrote her comment that she wrote on Heath Kelly's page. Okay. Ash Lee, L E Y. She went to his page and put, How about an actual statement from you thanking people for looking for your wife? 
Who on earth says that? Like, seriously. Who on earth goes to this man's page who just lost his wife? For one, Ash Lee. I didn't see you out there searching. And I know everybody that was with me searching, and you wasn't one of them. So, for you to go to this man's page, you should be ashamed of yourself. And if anybody, that's a fake name because that's a Facebook page. If that's a fake fake name. Look it up. Let me know. See what you see what your sleuthers can find because I'm pissed. I, I find that just horrible and disgusting. You know, he's having a hard enough time. He's raising four kids. He's been in the hospital. <laughs> Last I knew he was still in the hospital. I just, oh, I find that so sickening, like absolutely sickening. Ugh, man, sorry to the family. Sorry to he. Well, then we had another little episode that happened today that it got sent to me. And uh, it's in the community page in case you haven't got a chance to look at it. But I'm going to tell you what it said. I don't want to bring your page up here. Because she's irrelevant to me. And at some point, when this is all said and done, I will go over that. Let's see here. I mean, I agree, Selena. More like an ass Lee. Leah. Yeah, that's that's just uncalled for. Anybody that goes after the the victims here, I have no room for you. I would like to throw punch you, honestly. Um same thing with Wrangler's family. You know, I really love his grandma. She's a sweet lady. She took her time out to meet me when I was in Yucatan. There, I mean, if she called me right now and said, hey, Rock, I got to be somewhere, somewhere in the morning. Would you go with me? I'd drive there and go with her. Okay, so the other creator had, had put a thing on Facebook. That said, I might be able to bring it up for you. Actually, I might bring it up. My, I might just bring it up just because just cause I can. And they say just because you can don't mean you should. But just because I can, I just might. Let's see here. Let's see if I can bring it up. Because that's where I'm at with it. I'm, I have no more Fs to give right now. Like, people are going to be stupid. I'm going to call him out for being stupid. Let's see here. Yeah, okay. So, in case you haven't seen the page, um, I think you have, but people's asked anyway, so I'm just going to show you. You have the home page, you have videos, you have shorts, the lives, the playlist. What the playlist is, is if you go and hit that, it'll play all the videos back to back to back to back to back. Like, if you if you didn't get to see some of the earlier videos when it was boots on the ground um, and you're bored or you just want to go back and see them and say you're doing something and you just kind of want to hear it, you can hit that playlist and it'll go through and it'll play them all. So. It's a neat little tool. Anyway, let's go to this community page because, yeah. And I did talk to the grandma today. I said, um, has anybody got to talk to Wrangler at all? Nope. So, well, I might send you to a page because there's something that was... Now, mind you, I don't go to this page. I got enough to handle on my own. So, with that said, I don't go looking at other people's pages. Like, I'll go to Melanie's if, if I have a chance and I know she's live. <coughs> we started this adventure. It's not been a good adventure, but, you know, looking for these women. Uh, as most of you know, we are a true crime community. So we're bound and determined to make sure that we're, we come live every day for the community. But you be well aware that the team is still working. And if we can help Ellie or we find something in the videos I did or anything that can help them to go further, we will definitely go there with that. Okay. So we are crime sleuths. And, you know, that's kind of where we're at right now. But basically, we definitely. But so this is what I put. This was sent to me earlier. 
Interesting to say the least. I always stand with the family, as you know. Wrangler has a court order of no contact for 30 days. <coughs> that means he has not got to talk to his mother, or his, of course not his mother, but he hasn't got to talk to his father or his grandmother or anybody like that. Um, as a matter of fact, every day his dad asks, you know, how many more, you know, are we getting close? Well, he was put in on the 22nd and 30 days, no contact with family. So they just got a few more days, thank goodness, because then they'll be able to talk to him a bit. And honestly, it's probably, be, probably better. And I'm not saying this in a rude way because the family knows I love the daylights out of them. But maybe this would have been just too much on him right now. And he's going to need his family. And he definitely don't need stuff like this. Let's hope he gets clean. You know, everybody makes mistakes. Good people make bad mistakes. It happens. You know, as long as you admit to them and you go forward. Uh, I see everybody saying, you know, hope your eyes. Okay, yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, I never was going to be a creator, just so you guys know. Um, I've helped several people. Me and the team's helped several people. And we've been on the Idaho 4 case. And then this came up. And we were like, I'd watched Melanie and I said, guys, what do you think? Like, I feel like I've got to, I've got to do this. Like, I've got to go there. Okay. I want you to read this. Family ties. What you didn't expect. Wrangler's side of the story and let's discuss. Okay. Well, for one, Wrangler's side of the story. How do we know Wrangler's side of the story? Because he's locked up. Okay. I have a problem with that. So I did make uh, a call to make sure that I wasn't overstepping, that maybe somehow, some way, this lady was able to get in there and and talk to Wrangler. But as you see here, it's been, uh, the comments been erased. But here is a couple of the comments on there. How can you tell Wrangler's side of the story of this when Wrangler can't even talk to anybody, not even his family? And I agree with her a thousand percent. Nobody needs to be his voice but him. Guys, you know, this kid's going to be going through enough. Trying to get clean, doing his, his rehab. You know, we want to make sure that everything goes good for him. The best that we can. Do I think he was involved in this? I don't. Um, I know he was trying to help Veronica get shared custody. I know his uh, granny, we'll just keep calling her granny because, yeah, that's just how it goes. Granny seems to want to control everything. So, anyway, there's that. I While I'm here, I'm just going to show you some things. Let's see here if I can go back. I wanted to show you the, the crosses that was made, if I could get to them. Should have let me go. I'll try this again. So I want to see want you to see the crosses. If you haven't been to the community page to see the crosses, they are on here. Oops, we're gonna skip right over that. There's one of them. Um, Angel made them. Got some butterflies on it. Very pretty. She put a lot of work into them. And I imagine eventually they'll end up with the family. But, you know, I don't know what they're going to do at this point as far as a memorial or anything like that. Nor would I ask if anybody hears anything. I know we got a lot of people that was friends with Veronica in here. I got a lot of people that's friends with Heath and Jillian in here. Um, let me know because I plan on going to every one of them. Also plan on going to every court date. Yesterday was this one that I couldn't go to. <clears throat> and if there's anybody else that wants to go to the to the court and you're not comfortable going by yourself, you're more than welcome to ride along with me. Okay. Anyway, there's one of the memorials. And here is the other one. <coughs> As you see, this is one of the memorials made. Thank you, Angel. There will be another one made too. These memorials are from everyone in the Rock Chalk Nation, which is everybody that's in here that comes here every day 
comes in here and talks and listens like this isn't just from Rock Shock and the crew. This is from everybody. But I think she did an awesome job on it. But you've heard me talk about the community page. And now you kind of know how the community page is. You get the latest things. Big people send me stuff. Like I get. I'm the only one running that phone. I think I've responded to everybody by now. But anyway. On the community page. There it is. I just. That's stuff for in between the, the lives. So that you can watch. Okay, let me get back to the stream yard and see what we got going on over here. Yeah, they are beautiful. I thought she did an awesome job. I just took out the first one down. I was like, ah, you know, we really need two. We've really got two people here. We really need we need two. And she agreed. And I asked her, I said, Are you up to making another one? She said, By gosh, yes. So she did it. Well, what part of Iowa? You know, I'm Big 12, and I'm not a big fan of Iowa just because of the Big 12. But it's kind of the opposite way that, I mean, maybe. I could maybe go to Iowa. Pick you up. Be a road trip. You sure you're down for a road trip with Rock? It gets kind of dangerous, <laughs> you know. Mm. Ask my husband. I drive everywhere because he's driving. He drives to speed them, and he drives me nuts. and. He's usually yelling. Okay, I want to click this and please read it. For safety purposes and YouTube purposes, be sure to exercise caution. This is a YouTube channel. And it's for entertainment only, but I try my best to give you every bit of what I know and try to be as accurate as I can. Um, but please don't use your, your real first and last name. Some people in this YouTube world will track you. They'll track your family. Um, I would say that about about Facebook, too. I'm very, very picky about my Facebook. I've got it locked down pretty hard. Um, it's mostly people from high school. My very, very good friends. And my kids. You know, that's my safe spot. So, I guarantee you none of you can find me on Facebook. I've got it locked down pretty hard. So. I just want you to be safe out here because I don't want anybody coming after you. I I have pissed some people off. I'll be the first to say, yes, they're silk, so they'll last forever. Um, plus, we didn't know, honestly, we did not know when she started these, like the bodies hadn't been found yet. So we really weren't sure. We just was doing a memorial. Um, I think when the corner gets done and gets everything done, um, we wanted something that would last. Like if she made them the other day and they were out of real flowers, they wouldn't last. And this is something that, you know, they, they can keep or leave at the church. You know, whatever the family wants to do with them, it's going to be fine with me. We just want to do something as a group, as being part of the Rock Chalk. I changed it to Rock Chalk True Crime. Because I'm not ready to get rid of the rock chalk because that is KU, Kansas University. And uh, I did go in and hide my videos of all my basketball. I figured you guys probably didn't want to see that. You're here for this. So, um, yes, the crosses are beautiful. I'm read some of these. Yes, yeah, she did a beautiful job. I don't know. I will ride down with you anytime. You know, like I said, I plan on going to the next hearing, which is the 15th. Um, if you're from Wichita in the area and you want to go, um, we can work it out. Like, I would like to go the night before, but I'll definitely cover the room. And you can hang out with me for the night and go to the hearing. Um, one thing I do know is things seem really shady down in them parts of the woods. And... I personally am not going to sit back and let anybody walk away from this. Like, we're definitely going to hold people accountable. And showing up to the to the trial and to the hearings, that lets them know that we are not going to let it go. And there's a lot of things I let go, but this is not one of them. So, 
We'll figure it out. How far in Iowa are you? I love to drive, especially after I have this cataract surgery. So we'll figure it out one way or another. If nothing else, you know, Newton's not that far. We can put you on a train, get you to Newton, and I can pick you up there. That's about 38 miles. So we can figure it out. But what I will say is it's going to be very important that those of us that can show up to these hearings, even if we're just outside, we wanted to let law enforcement and the court system, the judicial system know we're not okay with this and we are not going to just let anything go. I don't know. I bet. <laughs> I bet I can outdrive your husband. You want to know the truth. I'm a pretty good driver and I have no fear. So I've said this before. I have a lot of friends that's in street outlaws. Um, I don't know if you're into drag strips. Uh, we've got one right here out of Wichita. He drives a Studebaker and he had a really bad wreck. I'll have to show you guys that wreck. Oh my God. But anyway, he goes all over racing professionally it's pretty interesting oh, chalk did you see the witness page where km you know yes i have and you guys if you paid any attention last night i went over his work history um how he was a part of the narcotics unit and some money came up missing and they started questioning him about it. Uh, then he said that the, the office got broken into. And this was out by, uh, let's see, was it mm, Ardmore, maybe? Maybe we can look it up. But anyway, he said that the narcotics unit got broke, broken into. But the problem with that was there was guns there. There was other money there. There was drugs there and nothing got stolen. So they did a, a grand jury indictment on him. And he ended up doing the plea bargain for a misdemeanor, which it should have been a felony. But he did a misdemeanor and he got a year's probation and he couldn't do it. He had to give up his law enforcement certificate and he couldn't do anything in law enforcement for three years. But here he is, head over the narcotics unit. Like, make that make sense to me. Like, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it at all. And we can pull that back up again and go over it again tonight. Because who hired this man? Now, I did have somebody call me today and say, now, this is all my opinions, okay? Other than other people's opinions, it's called and told me stuff, and I looked it up, and so now it's our opinion, okay? So he ran for Cimarron County, or yeah, Cimarron County Sheriff. And at the time, his wife now was a minor and was pregnant. And he didn't get elected. And I'm being told that's why he didn't get elected. I mean, here, you get a minor pregnant, you're in deep shit, that long being in law enforcement. So. Well, with that, let's see here. Oh, you got to go back to work. I'm sorry. Sorry, Joanne. I tried to pick a good time. I didn't want to do it during supper. And there's another creator who I think highly of. He does true crime. And he was live, so I didn't want to cut in on his live. So I was like, well, we'll just pick 745. Hopefully dinner's over. Hopefully I'm not making you miss, on, miss out on The Bachelor or something like that. Cause I don't want to do that to you. I'm feeling much better. Just my eyes very blurry. I took the lens out of one of my reader glasses. And, and now I can see this a little better. But I'm using them eye drops. Yeah, I did see they was questioned and released. But uh, it's just weird. I mean, why would they put in their arrest affidavit that he was present? when they were trying to get Veronica out of her house and then he was present the other day. Mm, makes no sense to me. But 
You know, at some point, we got to stand up and make our judicial system do the right things. I do know that, like, during COVID, oh, gosh, they wasn't arresting anybody. It was pretty much just, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty, and the jails had COVID. And, and we, I know around here, they let some pretty bad criminals go. And even worse things happen. So, yeah, that's what I said. And and I will say, I called I called his grandma and said, hey, I'm not trying to get you worked up, but did the judge make it to where Wrangler can talk to anybody? And she's like, no. And I said, well, could you go check this out? Because, you know, it kind of concerns me if somebody's going to tell his side of the story. And I agree that it should be him telling his side of the story. But I would tell him. I wouldn't talk to anybody right now. Like he needs to heal when he does get to talk to his family. You know, I wouldn't do any lives, honestly. Just get through that treatment. He's got six months. Six months is a long time. But for him, it's a good time. Like hopefully that'll help him because his babies are going to need him They're without their mom now. Uh, I'm not sure. I won't talk about the kids very much. I mean, I'm thinking the aunt is trying to get custody of the babies right now. But I would hope that if, if Wrangler gets clean, which I think he will, and, and now he won't have Granny in his life to control everything and scare the hell out of him, that maybe he can get things straight. And we all know good people make bad mistakes. Do I think he could be a good dad? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I see so many drag races, yeah. Kai Kelly, uh, I really like Kai Kelly. Um, I'm not going to keep naming all the names, but got a lot of racers out of Oklahoma there. That's really good. I was trying to think of, uh, my mind's just blank right now. I'm mod for, I'm mod for one of them channels that does drag races. Uh, the guy out of Norman. Gosh, dang it. Of course, my mind's going to be blank. I'll think of it when we're through it. He wins all the time. Gosh dang it. He's one of my favorites, too. And then I got a friend from Wichita here that races a Harley. And he won the Man Cup several times. But the Harley does like 280 miles an hour. But we all have different things that we like. We used to, my dad was a circle burner dirt track. Rock honestly. Rock honest, honestly, if it weren't for your courageousness, your selfless act to find these beautiful ladies, all that cause Texas County wouldn't have done it. You know what? I'm going to say the same thing. This bullshit that they say they were working on it. I didn't see any officers. Like, I'm not trying to dog LE, but really? I mean, the women were still missing. Whether or not they were working the case or not, they could have still had searches going on. You know, I thought I was going down to help in the search. I didn't know I was going down to be the search, the search party, which I'm not complaining about it, but it did upset me that we still had two missing women. And there was nobody looking. And I don't, a bunch of people that was friends of Veronica's that came out and a couple of Jillian's friends and for the first couple of days. But the problem was, that's a lot of area to cover. We really didn't know where to look either. Where, obviously, the police department knew. They could have gave us a heads up. And gave us an idea to look. I mean, there was plenty of uh, farmers there that definitely... Yeah, well, you know, you're a fan of the other team. Well, I love my vet, and he's definitely a Wildcats fan. But every time I take Smith & Wesson in, I make sure I'm all geared up in my rock chop. It, it, it just gets him fired up. But I do. I'm all about the Big 12. But obviously, rock chop is my favorite. And I'd say my second would be OSU Cowboys from Stillwater. That's where my kid went to school for wrestling. But I like all the Big 12. 
Rock Chalk that is being looked at. Yeah. I mean, just so much, guys. I'm going to continue to ask you. Um, you know, obviously, Wrangler, Wrangler's been locked up since the 22nd. I don't think he knew what was going on. I think he was helping Veronica, try to help Veronica get custody back. <clears throat> he said in the court papers that his mom made him lie, threatened to blow his head off. Now that she's going to be out of the picture for him, maybe he can actually go somewhere, you know? Yeah. It makes something of his life. I mean, that had to be miserable. You know, I, my heart breaks. For the 16 year old who turned her mom and stepped that in. You know, that had to be a hard thing to do. But she did it. I saw a lot of people tell me yesterday. Somebody shot her dog. And I was looking at pictures of her last night. And it just made me cry. Because it was pictures of her and her dog. On her mom's Facebook. That's just heartbreaking. Why did they shoot the dog? Like, I'd like to know more information on that. And what did did somebody just come and shoot the dog? I mean, you guys were telling me that the dog heard somebody shot her dog, but I'd like to know more about that. I'm still gonna tell you, don't get close to that compound. You still got stuff going on down there, and I don't understand it. That's for the judge <laughs> that was on Brian Inton. Mm. I don't feel sorry for you, sir. You you just got on national TV and said what a good guy Tad was and that you spent the last couple of weeks with him. If you spent the last couple of weeks with him, you probably would have noticed something weird about him. I mean, obviously, they killed two women. You're going to get on national TV and say what a good guy he is? Ooh. No. The whole old buddy system that needs to be put it into and you know you should love thy neighbor but you also should pay attention to your neighbor too i mean many of you down there had no clue that you possibly had a compound and i i still consider it a compound but the gods are the yeah the gods misfits i mean and i just kept thinking waco all over again and if they don't get shut down, let's see here. If they don't get shut down, they'll take over. Salvation Army treatment programs are great. I have a niece that was head of one in Illinois. I hope so. Like, I really do. I, again, you know, I don't know Wrangler. I didn't know the women. But from what I've read in all the documents, he was trying to help Veronica. I know that the grandma is grandma. I'll stand up for her any day. I know that she was going to court with Veronica and doing all kinds of things. Yeah, I, I think extra prayers should be said for the 16-year-old girl. I mean, I assume she's at her dad's that Cole was her stepdad. I mean, I obviously don't know I ain't seen the birth certificate, but that's what I assume. There's her and her brother. But it would have took a lot of courage to step up and say what, what she knew. And good for her. Because honestly, we probably would have never known. And yes, I'd be pissed, sorry, if anyone spoke about my child or for them while they were in rehab. Exactly. And that's the only reason that I, that I even called the grandma. It's like, listen, are you talking to Wrangler? Did the judge give you guys permission? She's like, no. I'm like, ah. Well, I don't understand this right here, but could you go look at it? Because it's kind of got me sideways. Especially when they haven't even got to talk to him. It'd be one thing if the grandma was speaking for him because she had talked to him. You know, ain't no YouTuber going to get to go talk to him when he can't even talk to his own family. Including myself, nor would I try. Nor... Would I try to implement that he knew anything about it? Like, anyway, I don't watch that show, so I don't know what ended up coming out of it. But when it was sent to me that it was going to be on there, it was like, what? CB Slinger. Mark Espinosa is waiting for you, Rock Shock. <laughs> well, I'll be doing the speed limit, but 
believe it or not, we talked a couple times. I, I think he's a good guy. I really think, I think he's a really good guy. He's a good singer, for sure. I know that it got pretty mm, sketchy down there. I'll say that. And uh, as far as having my back, I didn't feel like anybody really had my back while I was sleeping, anyway. And he made sure he had a deputy in the area at all times while I was sleeping. So, what little sleep I got anyway. But I know every time I went out to smoke a cigarette, because I am a smoker, I should quit. I get it. I know. But anyway, I smoked a lot. I was really stressed out down there. But it was really nice when I went out to smoke a cigarette and I saw the sheriff vehicle across the way you know i didn't feel as intimidating i guess and not that i was intimidated because i do carry and i would shoot somebody in a heartbeat good luck getting through that door without getting bullets in you that's all i can say i'm gonna go down fighting i agree i'm in el dorado kansas and we have the prison that all inmates go to for intake before they are sent to other prisons Hmm. Well, that's where Dennis Rader is. My friend Randy Sherman runs that prison. Been there for a long time. We also got the Carr brothers there. I said, there's some horrible people in this world. It really is. And then there's people out there that get maybe falsely charged. I mean, there's people that I've known that's went to prison and actually believe their stories and think it was a setup. So... I can't imagine the kind of stress Wrangler much have endured with the egg donor. I know, right? Could you imagine that being your mother? Threatening to blow your head off? Keeping your kids from you? I mean, no wonder he did drugs. Heavens to Betsy. It makes you wonder how a person gets to the point of murder. You know, growing up, I've said this a thousand times to my friends. You know, growing up, say i had a boyfriend you know all through high school i knew if i got pregnant my dad was gonna bury me six feet under like literally like i thought he'd really go dig a hole and bury me six foot under i didn't back talk my father or my grandfather i mean nowadays kids even adults they don't seem to care about the outcome because they know you just they can get away with so much i don't know there's, there's times in when I think the law should be changed. So, Ashley says, I remember how frustrated Rock was that literally there was no search party. Yeah, it was frustrating, but it didn't stop me. But my frustration came from the part that I really thought I was going to help look for these women. And then I get there and the sheriff meets me at the gas station and says, I can't stop you from searching. Just don't trespass. Make sure you get permission. And I asked, well, can you tell me where they've searched? Oh, there's people out there searching all the time. Mm, no, that wasn't true. Unless it was farmers searching their own land. And I get that. Many of them come up to me and said, hey, I might not have been out there helping you. But when I was cutting my cattle, I was riding my whole acreage. Or when I was doing my irrigation system, Rock, I was really looking. I believe them. I believe them. But as far as the search party, it was a... Uh, and honestly, I guess the more I'm threatened, the more I'm really gung-ho. Because that night that that charger went by, it wasn't the first time, and it had a slice off. I actually chased it, and we were doing 110. So, yeah, my husband was a flagman at 81. So, and then uh, a good friend of mine owned the drag strip. I'm not going to pass out their names, but yeah, my husband flagged out there as a part-time job for a long time. Family owned it. Now they got new owners. We still go out there. A lot of kids race modified since uh, my kids' his age. Pinky Mullins is grandson. He's a really good racer and he races. Yeah, it's somebody sending me the thing. Kevin McIntyre is a freaking witness list. Yeah. Like, you guys explain that to me. Like, um, I don't know. We'll go over his, his little account here again real quick. I, I'm not a big boomer sooner, but, hey, I got a lot of family in Oklahoma. I have a house in Oklahoma. 
Every place deserves a fan. Every team deserves a fan. I say that all the time. Kansas girl here. I'm glad I'm someone is back home taking care of these Kansas moms. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, there's a lot of people that cared. A lot of churches involved. I didn't do it for the fame or glory. I did it because I really wanted to find them, and I really wanted to find them. I don't know about the drug. I really wanted to find them alive. Listen, I want to know more about the dog story, too. And from the second day I was there, I was driving by Granny's house probably 15 times a day. And she had these two great big Pyrenees dogs that would run out. They're the big white dogs. I actually wonder what happened to the white dogs. Like, is somebody taking care of them? I don't know much about her daughter and, and the other son. But hopefully they're just not shooting these, these animals. Let's find them a home. Like, I'd be happy to help them find a home. You know, that, that's one of my passions, and everybody in the team will tell you, and it's their passion too. I said if we ever did decide to monetize this channel, none of it would go to me or anybody else, but we'd pick a person in our group, in our team, and they could give to a charity, and everybody was on, the, on board about giving to charities for animals. There we go. I'm a Kansas Jayhawk fan, Rock Chalk Jayhawks. Second is LSU. I was born and raised in Louisiana till I was 12 when we moved to Kansas. Yeah, I'm kind of heartbroken. My husband sent me a thing last night. It's kind of weird when he's in the living room and I'm in here doing a live. He sends me something. And my favorite player right now was Furby. Furby it's from uh, Australia. And I was actually there when he came to, to talk to him. He never went home. He started playing. I saw he entered the NBA draft. Uh, would it be rude if I said, I hope you don't get drafted and we at least get another year out of him? It's a good player, but I think he could use another year under. Yes, yeah, so I keep everything comp confidential, even the text messages. I'm the only one that sees this phone. I'm the only one that looks at it. That's why it takes me a little longer to get back with you. I'm telling you. I had to ask the doctor yesterday, what the heck did you guys give me? Because everybody told me they'd give me volume, and they didn't give me no volume. <clears throat> oh, you have two female German Shepherds, best dogs ever. They really are. I have, I have two males, Smith and Wesson. But, so I thought they was, they was giving me volume, and God, I couldn't wake up even to go to my appointment yesterday afternoon. It was, I slept all the way there, and I said, what the heck did you guys give me? They gave me fentanyl. Like, I'm sure it was a controlled dose and all that from the anesthesiologist, but damn, he kicked my ass. I didn't even feel my pain meds. Like, mm, I don't want to feel that way. And I'm still tired today. Like, I made myself get up. I probably could have slept all day and all night. But I wanted to get back to you good folks that's taking their time out, messaging me, telling me things. I pay attention. I assume that she is in protected custody, but I I remember reading the paperwork where her mom got really angry because she went to get her from her dad's and she wasn't allowed to have them. So I would assume at that point that she was in protected custody. And I'd heard, and I don't know how true it is, but I heard that, uh, she told a teacher, and you know, if you're a teacher or you're law enforcement or you're a nurse or you're a doctor, you're a mandated reporter. So anything that comes across to you like that, you're mandated to report it or you could be charged too. Rumor mill, but I heard Cole T shot the dog. So like the dog was shot before they got arrested. Is that what you're telling me? Oh, this saddens me. But I guess in some sense it's better than torturing the dog. You know? I just feel bad, bad for the little girl. I call her a little girl because 16 is young. Very young. Yes, the views, opinions, and information expressed on this channel are for entertainment purposes only. 
but we all know I'm trying to tell you the, the truths of everything, everything I know. Yes, let's see here. He's saying I felt that from the get go. Rock, I text you screenshots of a statement from Judge Forbes that was just posted. You did that just now. Let me look. Listen, I don't feel sorry for that guy at all. I'll look at that phone here in just a second. Are they still having church or school? Whatever. I mean, somebody would have to drive by there on Sunday, but I'm sure they are. There was two, two to 300 people. I'm sure their whole way of thinking hasn't changed just because four people went to jail. I mean, I don't think that's how it works, is it? I don't think so. I think you guys still have something to worry about down there. I'd keep an eye on it if I was you. I know if it was in my neck of the woods, I'd be keeping an eye on it. I'd be trying to shut it down. I mean, I'm not an arsonist, so, and I hope none of you are, but you know what I'm saying. I'd, I'd be trying to shut it down. You know the pics of T.A.'s pics of the dead cattle from the blizzard? I feel she totally took advantage of people that helped take care of babies that survived because they were offering free help. Yeah, not only that. That's the other thing I wanted to get to. So the documents came, they were filed yesterday. They came out today. And they're saying that now they all want court appointed attorneys. I mean, first I read that she had a, the attorney she hired was the same one that represented Timothy McVeigh. And now I'm reading that they're all asking for court appointed attorneys that they can afford their own, sell some of their assets. I mean, I mean, they got money. They got all that land. They've got cattle. They got weed farms. Sell their shit. That's what I say. Why should a taxpayer have to pay for their, their stuff? Some might think I'm insensitive. Sorry. Sorry, but not sorry. Let's see here. It's in the update. Of course, showed up and threw a fit and stepdad got out with a gun on his hip. Yeah, but, I mean, that's, listen, that's an open carry state. So as long as you're not a felon, you can open carry. Kansas, you can too. But that don't mean that he shot the dog. I mean, when did the dog die? Like, I don't know. I want to know more about the dog. Pro probably easier to send it to my burner phone because that seems to be what's going crazy i'm finally figuring it out let me put the burner number in here um, you could send it to there the other email is the email i have but i don't know how to get into it i need to take the time to figure it out between returning the messages on this uh burner phone can't hardly keep up. I'm doing the best I can. I promise you, I'm not lazy. It's really hard to keep up with everybody, but keep on. Keep on sending it. Like, I'm doing my best to keep up with it, but keep on sending it. Everybody's so nice, so calm. How many people out there plan on attending these court hearings? I'm curious. Because the more that attend, the more they'll realize that they can't just get away with stuff. If there is still the good old buddy system, we need to let them know we're paying attention. I'm curious how many people's planning on trying to attend them court hearings because I know I am. And I know many of you, you can't take off work. Like, I get it. Of course, boy seems to have his. Have his dog? Is that what you're saying? Great guy. I don't know what that was about. I hope it's not about the judge because he didn't look too smart to me, in my opinion. I know that nobody here. Oh, I felt safe in Elkhart, especially after I met uh, Officer Mendoza. Like I said, he 
he was actually listening to the live and didn't realize it was me he was pulling over but i was in a hurry and i was speeding but right there at the edge of town it goes from 65 to 40 uh, quickly i mean around here we call it a speed trap but it is what it is i saw him and i was on the live and i said oh no there's a sheriff officer crap yep I'm, as soon as he pulled out i knew i was getting pulled over i pulled over he didn't have to chase me down i slowed down and he even said that uh he didn't have his radar gone when i went by that he actually it took him a minute to turn his radar on he still caught me at 20 miles an hour over so i was probably doing 30 over i don't know but it does drop let's see i was friends with jason before really jason as in are you talking about um wrangler's dad maybe is that you're talking about i know the grandma uh i've talked to jason briefly today was the first time i've i've even heard his voice but i know the grandma is super awesome I just pray that that's nowhere, like, that's not where I was at. And I don't believe I was. <clears throat> I wanted to go to a bridge, this bridge that was over by that area. But I didn't want to go by myself. I wanted some men to go with me. But I realized people work and a lot of people can't do it. And that's, and I also realized y'all got to live there. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, you know, my ex-husband arrested the Carr brothers, too, in the apartments here in Wichita. That's crazy. That's a bad deal. They killed a lot of people. Some people just get, they get crazy. I mean, I, I always worry, you know, what's it, what is it going to be like when my grandkids get older? Rock, I got your back. If court is on my day off, I'd be up to the road trip with you. There you go. Uh, the more the merrier you know i think the courtroom only holds about 50 people i think they said they had 32 show up but i'm also down to stand outside and you know wear a granny shirt granny's then got herself her, her fanny in a jammy granny's got her fanny in a jammy how about that i'm sure you guys could think of really good shirts that we could not wear in the courtroom, but we definitely could wear as they're walking the, the sidewalk of shame. I just don't want this to go to the side. This is a long ways from being over. <coughs> and no shortcuts. Like We're not going to let them take any shortcuts either. Uh, yeah, you got to know those farmers were checking without people realizing that. Yeah, I know they were. Especially the ones with a lot of land. They even told me. No, they didn't want to be on camera, but the day I was in front of Yarborough School and the winds were 60 miles an hour, um, I ran in with the superintendent. I just met him. I ran in with him. He was showing pictures of Veronica on the wall, and we just talked about several things. That's when he told me that the school finally got approved for cameras. Like, any school in America that don't have cameras, that's ridiculous. Cameras are cheap enough. Like, they should have cameras. But he was telling me they are getting cameras. My guess is they knew the women were dead based on the 4-3 statement by Cora's daughter. So then switched to electronic forensics to pinpoint where they could be. Hmm. Could be because their bodies still wasn't found. So why wasn't we still searching? Like, I get it. I get what you're trying to say. But as a searcher out there, it'd been nice to have some LE help. I can't keep going back on that. I, all I know is I gave you guys everything I had. Ugh, JLR. One thing I can say, he's been he's been trying to cover this. And he keeps calling her granny. Um, gosh, there's Cop Talk too. It's a it's a YouTube channel I never knew of, and uh, somebody sent it to me today, and I looked at it, and they said, well. We hear she don't like to be called granny, so we're going to call her granny the whole time. So that kind of cracked me up. 
She does not like to be called granny, just so you know. You could probably call her any word in the book, bitch, anything, but she does not like to be called granny. I don't know. I just seen a snippet on Facebook. It says cause of death they are working on, but they were not shot. You know, that's the other thing with News Nation that really uh, got me going. You know, they had breaking news. Well, they had breaking news for so long, in my opinion, that the FBI was coming. Every day the FBI was coming. Okay. Then they had breaking news that the FBI is coming. And then they had breaking news that uh, that the women were shot. How do they know that? Last I knew, the coroner hadn't released the same thing. I don't know. Mainstream media. I got away from mainstream media. I used to watch it really a lot. Disrespect starts in elementary schools. I worked at them, and the kids are so entitled. Broke my heart. Yeah, I mean, you got young kids cussing you out. You, you know, they don't care. But that also goes back to the parents. Raise your kids right. Says not shot. Let's see here. They just sent me something. I'm going to look and see. Grandma admitted responsibility for Kansas for deaths of two Kansas women in Oklahoma, April 18th. A grandmother admitted after her arrest that she was responsible for the deaths of the two women who were missing in the Oklahoma panhandle on March 30th. The OSBI reported Tiffany Adams, her boyfriend, and a married couple are accused of kidnapping and killing Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. They were arrested Saturday after being charged in Texas County District Court. The children had been staying with Adams, according to court documents, from the custody dispute. Butler, 27, had come from Kansas to pick the children up for a birthday party. Kelly, 39, the pastor's wife, was along for, for the supervised visits. At a, heart, at a hearing scheduled for April 17, 2024, Butler would potentially have been granted unsupervised visitation with her children. The OSBI agent wrote in the affidavit, Adams opposed this and went to great lengths to plan and purchase items used to use in Butler and Kelly's murders. Two counts of first-degree murder, two counts of kidnapping, and one count of conspiracy to commit murder. All of them got the same counts. All four have been identified as belonging to an anti-government group called God's Misfits. They have been appointed. A, they have been appointed attorneys who have a policy of not talking to the media. Mm. So their attorneys are not going to talk to the media, you say. The pathologist is still working to determine the cause of death. The state's chief medical examiner, Dr. Eric Pfeiffer, said Thursday. That they, they were not shot. Let's look this up. I'm sure you guys want to see it other than me just reading it. That way you can screenshot it and you can look it up later. So give me just a minute. I'm going to. It's in the Oklahomian. So I don't know if that's something you got to pay for or not. But I'm going to try to find it for you. So, if you're from Oklahoma and you know what the Oklahomian is, then you probably know the All righty, let's see here. Let's see if we can see if we can find it. Um. A lot of commercials on there. Hmm. 
I'm going to look over here and make sure you guys are seeing it okay. Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to be checking that out too. Let me just scoop on down here. Where is she at? Ooh, that's pretty far behind here. Someone that's been with me from the beginning. I didn't know if she accidentally got blocked, what was going on. I'm hearing she's in chat. I'm looking for her. Ooh. How far behind did I get, guys? It happens. Okay, there, there we go. So glad to see you. We didn't know what happened to you. Awesome. Okay. When we're done with this, I am going to make you a moderator for the channel, by the way. I'm glad to see you're back. I was stressing about that. I was like, what happened? Yeah, Ashley spent all night looking for her. So glad she's back. We're glad to have everybody, but we're glad she's back. Okay, back to this article. Okay. Guess I should turn my phone down to silent. Anyway, it does say after arrest April 13th. I read all that. If you want to go look at the Oklahomian, it'll tell you. It talks about the bitter custody battle. I was going to show you so you see for yourself why I get irritated with mainstream media when they say things that there's no way that they know. Okay, here we go. The pathologist is still working to determine the causes of death. The state's chief medical examiner, Dr. Eric Pfeiffer, said Thursday they were not shot. You see that? Thursday. They were not shot. So, and News Nation is one that says they were shot. Now you know why I got so PO'd the other night when they started releasing that they were shot. Like, what in the world? Some, some people should not be reporting. Anyway, it says they were not shot. In the new affidavit, the OSBI confirmed that the bodies were found on property. These by Coleman to graze cattle. The bodies were recovered after an excavation of an area of disturbed dirt. The OSBI revealed in the affidavit a stun gun was also located at the excavation site. Adams had bought five stun guns in Guyman on March 23rd. Adams and Coleman were described in the new affidavit as having a history of violent interactions, including death threats and intimidation against individuals who disagree with their ideas. At the time of his arrest, Coleman had a rifle, ammunition, body armor, and a go bag prepared at his residence, according to the data. Is that... Let me ask you something. So, the judge that is so upset that he lost his job said he was there at the time of the raid. Did he not see that there was a rifle, there was ammunition, and body armor? He was such a good friend, remember? He's such a good friend. Such a good guy and such a good friend. We did business together. I was with him every day for the last couple of weeks. Okay. Both Cole, who was openly armed, and Corr confronted law enforcement officials in the state of state of Texas in an attempt to interfere and intimidate witnesses cooperating with law enforcement. Okay, so that tells me that that's probably where the daughter's dad lives, Texas. So. Those of you that asked if you thought she if I thought she was safe, I think she's with her dad. 
I don't know the circumstances of that. And please don't go try to look them look them up. I beg you. Leave the girl alone. Let her be a kid. Let's see here. We're going to make sure that. Uh, I want to see if. I want to see if News Nation has put out anything else today that's silly. Because this going to get me started on News Nation. I mean, court's over, so who knows? Actually, let's go to YouTube. That might be the easiest place to go. Let's take that off of there. Seems like if you still search Kansas women missing, a lot of stuff comes up. There's a lot of people covering it now. Well, I don't think I saw this, so let's watch this because I know I haven't saw it. What's going on here? Hold on. Let me try this again. We will go pull it again. play in this case well that timeline go. definitely gives us um an idea as to who to go to who will have possible motive who has the most to gain from this woman being killed so i think that gave the law enforcement in this case an ability to have some leeway as to where to go where to focus their investigation because usually that is not the case good thing for law enforcement that they were actually able to narrow in on this woman because of of her possible motive. And again, with these charges, motive does not need to be proven. However, motive does provide for a prosecutor a reason to prove a person's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. That will be evidence that they'll be able to provide ultimately to a jury to convict these four individuals. Well, and it seems interesting to me that all of these four individuals charged with the same charges. Um, as you outlined, a potential motive for Adams in this case appears to be the clearest. What do you believe will be the legal strategy moving forward here do you think the prosecution is working to set up an attempt to try to get one or more of these suspects to essentially flip on the others Absolutely. As a former prosecutor, when you're talking about four defendants involved in a murder, usually you try to see, depending on the strength of the case of the evidence that you already have, whether there's a necessity for you to try to flip, try to get one of the defendants to cooperate against the others. Because my understanding is that there's no video of this incident that took place. There is corroboration in the terms of phone records and being able to link it with uh, internet searches as well as testimony possibly from a 16 year old one of the 16 year old kids in this case however in any prosecution nothing is guaranteed when you present it to a jury so you want to try to get as much evidence as much information as you can and the best information that you can get is from someone that is involved of course juries don't love it however sometimes you have to try to get someone to flip to try to make out and get a better understanding of what actually happened so, Bernardo, unfortunately, we only have about 30 seconds left, but I have to sneak this question in here. Our very own Brian Nenton, he spoke with a municipal judge who's a friend of one of the suspects. And after well, that, the mayor who appointed him asked for his right. resignation. Uh, you know, keep in mind, this judge had nothing to do with this case that's now unfolding. What does that tell you about the politics happening in the background, the potential power these suspects uh, may wield uh, while they're being held in custody? 
Yeah, that shows us a lot. But also it could be because they don't want that appearance of impropriety. Like they found this man was at the location. The judge was at the location where a search warrant was being executed. So they don't want the public questioning Amen. as to whether this judge was involved, what his involvement was, what his connection was to in these individuals. And quite honestly, from his interview, it, it seems that he was very surprised of these charges of that this man, his friend, could have been involved. Yeah. All right, makes a lot of sense. Bernardo Villalona, we'll follow it. Thank you so much for weighing in. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button okay. below to get Let that sink in. But he said he was a good friend, like, been with him for the last couple of weeks. Like, do you really want that judge to be the judge of your town? I don't think so. Okay, let's make sure that there's not more that we have missed. Don't see anything new. As far as News Nation. I realize people is messaging the phone right now. I'm trying to make sure that we're all caught up. Okay. Yeah, Elizabeth, hey, we know that uh, we've known that the moms were found in a rural area about eight and a half miles away from where the car was discovered. But this is the very first time that we are seeing video and okay. images of when investigators showed up. Uh, trigger warning. I don't know what you're going to see. So I'm just going to tell you trigger warning right now because I don't have a clue what you're going to see. It says it was released 28 minutes ago. So I'm going to make it bigger so you can see it out at the location and started digging and searching for the moms. And if you look closely, it's grainy. We were able to obtain this video. It was taken from a, a ways away. So it's a little bit hard to see, but if you look closely, Elizabeth, you can see all of the police cars out there. Uh, the investigators are out there and there is also equipment that they had on site that they were using at that location as they began digging for uh, the bodies. Again, it's about eight and a half miles away from where the mom's car uh, was discovered. We have learned through sources that the bodies were found 10 feet uh, beneath the surface, that they had been covered with soil and they had to dig 10 feet down, located near uh, a dam, uh, and that hay in the area was used to then cover the soil so that no one would be able to notice uh, that they were digging in that area. We have also learned uh, that it was cell phone pings from the burner phones. Remember, the suspects had burner phones, uh, that it was the cell phone pings uh, that led them that, to that area. And that is why they, they focused in on that rural area, started digging there, and then 10 feet down uh, discovered the bodies. Right. I was just going to ask you what led them to that location, how ironic it was the burner phones that Tiffany Adams, the grandmother of the two children who's charged with murder, the cell, the burner phones that she herself purchased in the days uh, leading up to the murders. We're also hearing that there may be a fifth suspect, a fifth yes, person who is part of God's misfit, who may be facing some sort of charges. Is that true? So no charges at this point at all, Elizabeth, but this has been one of the big sort of mysteries that continues to remain and that people are questioning in the community why this person hasn't been charged, who this person is. It, the name is Paul Grice. Uh, he is named in the affidavit. He was questioned by police. So he was taken in. He was questioned. He was released. It appears that he knew something about what happened, exactly what uh, we don't know, but but he was released and we've talked to people today, Elizabeth, who know him and his family and are saying, look, he's a, he's a good man uh, and they are waiting to hold judgment. Uh, if he hasn't been arrested at this point, they say everyone should sort of just back off right now because rumors are flying like crazy out here. Yeah, uh, but but he's not been arrested at this point, Elizabeth. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see where that goes. Brian, we've been hearing so much about the influence, the power, the sway that this uh, family of Tiffany Adams uh, had in this small community. I'm, I'm curious in that town there. Is there a lot of support? I know the victim's families are furious and were quite vocal about it and had to be restrained in court yesterday. But what about people who live in that area? Are they still afraid to speak out about these four murder suspects or are people starting to loosen up now? Uh, they're loosening up a little bit, but there's still a lot of, you know, intimidation. I mean, these suspects, some of them were very, very powerful. And if you look at that video again, the new exclusive video that we got, Elizabeth, 
uh, the person who na owns that land, his name is Jamie Beasley. And this, this is sort of a good example. Uh, Tad uh, Cullum, one of the suspects, uh, wealthy, has a lot of land. He leased some of the land from Jamie Beasley where the, the bodies were discovered, uh, the video that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, and the thought is, you know, perhaps he leased this land from someone who doesn't have as much money, decided to go out and bury the bodies there. They have similar looking trucks, which is interesting. Was he sort of trying to frame Jamie Beasley? Is that a possibility? Uh, but so you've got people like, you know, Jamie Beasley who are say, who are intimidated. I mean, yeah. this guy had a lot of money, came out, leased some of his land, and now police show up, start digging, as you can see in the video, and that's where they discovered the bodies. All right, Brian Enton reporting live from Oklahoma on top of this story from the very start. Thanks so much. Let's talk about that for a minute, okay? I think it's safe to say I don't think that this James Beasley knew, honestly. It is very common that people own land out there and that they they lease it out. But back to the judge, like, would you guys be comfortable having a judge like that in, in that position, hearing all the charges, and he says, what a good guy? Tad was and they had they had breakfast every morning there in Elkhart. I'm just curious, what do you guys think about that? And as far as uh the other guy, Paul Grice, uh well, in the affidavit it says that he was in both places, both times. I don't find that to be a coincidence, but hey, I'm not the one handling the case, but he might be a nice guy, but why was he there in February when they were trying to get her out of the house? And why was he there when it all went down on the 30th? You know, one time might be a coincidence, but twice a coincidence? I don't know. Is there any other articles that any of you have seen that I need to go over? Yeah, let me say this again. Like, I don't think where to go. I don't think that Beasley knew either. There we go. I don't think Jane, Jamie Beasley knew anything, but was intimidated by Tad. I don't know that he was intimidated. I mean, like I said, it's very common. I don't, you might be a local and know more than I know, because that's for sure that I don't know anything. I'm just assuming a lot of things, but uh, I don't think Beasley knew, but I do believe maybe had used him and wanted to frame him, like the reporter said, that got, that could be possible. Listen, I know Tad, I know Tad leased a lot of land. I do know that before one of our horses got hurt, um, a, landowner, a landowner came to us and asked us to go ride his land. And while riding that land, there was a couple spots that looked pretty uh, shady. I'll just say that. It was fresh dirt, and it was not this land. It wasn't this James Beasley's land. And uh, they called, and we said, get get out of there. Just get out of there right now. Get out of there while you can. So it's not uncommon for these landowners to lease out their land to these farmers. Um, I met another guy out in front of the school who um, he – Tad, Tad leased some land, and the owner was there that, that Tad leased his land from. And he had, had told a quick story, I'm just going to tell it quickly, that at some point, there, Tad said he was going to whip this guy type of thing, and the guy never understood what was going on. So anyway, he was with his mom, sent his mom somewhere, and went and confronted Tad. And he said, I heard you you got something to say to me. What What's your deal? And Tad goes, well, I heard you were trying to bid on leasing this land. And that particular gentleman said, listen, I won't ever put a bid on this land until it stop, stops being farmed. The day somebody leases this land and is not going to farm it, I'll bid as high as I have to. So that tells me right there that they want to keep their farming going and they don't want somebody to come in and, and just build, maybe even put pig farms on it. I don't know. They want to keep their crops growing. And that's the that's what I took away from the guy that said that. I'd heard one one news station that Mr. Beasley cried when he found out something like that had happened on his land. Yeah, I mean that's got to be hard. 
But also I read, we went over it at one point that he also called in that he found things being strange. That he, but then I read another report that uh, Tad had told him something. And if anybody asked him, just tell him, just tell him that he had moved the skid loader or something. I don't remember what it pertained to, but I think Mr. Beasley was innocent. But I don't know him. So, but that said, I, I don't know. I just know there's some good farmers around there. I really enjoyed watching. Um, met a lot of guys that was out there counting the head of cattle for their dad. Super nice kids. Yes, ma'am. Everything was yes, ma'am. You know, the good old days. Like, they're still being raised right. Working hard on them farms. Rock, you need to find out who this Paul is listed with the other murderers. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know what more I can find out other than I know that somebody that works with him said he's been to work. He's not jumping out of Super 8 hotel rooms and stuff like that. Like, maybe they don't have enough evidence to 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 arrest him, but they sure put it in the affidavit, the probable cause. For arrest warrant, probable cause for arrest warrant. He's in there twice. Both times they were trying to take care of uh, Veronica. He was there. Coincidence? I don't know. I don't know the guy. I'd definitely be asking questions. Okay. Looking at the RV with what looks like a satellite makes me wonder if they use some sort of penetrating sonar. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll never know the complete details. They're going to let us know enough to keep us wondering. What I do know is if you guys step back, including myself, which I won't step back, and let them try to run the system and, and get breaks because of who they are, you're looking at bad news. You know, hopefully they got good judges there in Guyman, and they make sure that that the people are actually paying attention. Make sure you subscribe. All that it does when you subscribe. And if you would hit the thumbs up. What that does is it keeps it up in the algorithm. So if you go to look up something. This will push it towards the top of the algorithm. And you won't have to dig to find it. As far as the subscribe. Uh, many people told me it was hard to find the channel. And I knew it was. And it took some convincing from the team. For me to add the true crime on the end. As you see I wasn't ready to get rid of the rock chalk. But it is a little easier to find now. When you put in rock chalk true crime. But if you subscribe. Let's just show you how to do the subscription. Just so you kind of know. Because that will be easier. Let's make sure real quick that. We already did her. Make sure we didn't miss anything. That was five days ago. Okay. Here we go. Actually, I might. Hold on. I'll just look up this one. Melanie. If you don't follow Mel Melanie Little, please do. I followed her for a long time. She is the one who. Brought my attention to this case. Okay, so like when you hit subscribe here, subscribe don't cost you anything. And if you hit the all button, then you'll get every notification of everything she puts, whether it be in her community or her lives, you'll get notified. Um, just like my channel, I know you're here. I know most of you are here because of the Kansas women. I get it. Um, when we're done with this case, it'll be a while before we're done. But me and the team also work on uh, the Idaho 4 case. That's another crazy, crazy case um, that we've been working on. And we dropped everything, like all of our research and everything's still sitting there to work on this one. And so thanks to the team for dropping everything to work on this one. But anyway, you, you can hit subscribe. It's real easy. When you're done with my channel, you can hit unsubscribe. You know, and it'll take you off of there. Like, the only thing it does is it lets you know what's being, what's being posted. Like, when I post in the community page.
so you don't miss the live. It just makes it easier to find. But nobody's obligated to have to stay here. Like, I'm still going to be your friend, no matter what. Like, I'm in this for the long haul. So, it looks like Melanie has not went live on this case for three days. I know there were some documents dropped today. I told you about them. Basically, they're saying that they all all need court-appointed attorneys. Your taxpayers, I'd be throwing a bit. Sell their shit. <laughs> Liquidate. As taxpayers, you shouldn't have to pay for that. They got money. Anyway. So hopefully that tells you how to do that. Is there anybody that's wanting to come up and talk? That's part of the group or anything at all? I don't know what I've missed in chat. But honestly, I'd have missed it anyway because we had a lot to go over. I kind of hate it sometimes when we have so much to go over. You know, I feel like I'm going to do it in 30 minutes. And I listen, I don't sit down and write it out like I do it off my brain. That's how deep I am into this case. Everybody that hits me up on that phone, I try to hit you back up. I've had a lot of psychics call me. I listen to you. I try to give everybody my time. Let's try not to prejudge people like Mr. Beasley. We don't know. We don't know what, what he did. I will keep bringing up Wrangler every live. You know, obviously he's in rehab. Let's hope he gets his shit together. And I know his grandma was helping Veronica. I know she's got some death threats, a lot of things going on. I find that just sickening to me. Very sickening. I mean, why why are you giving her death threats? I, I don't understand. I mean, she's already upset enough. She was close to Veronica. She went to she went to uh, court with Veronica. You know, you can't pick your family, okay? You might be able to pick your friends that you, that you call your family, but your bio family you can't pick. And I don't think her grandsons did anything wrong. I don't think her sons did anything wrong. I do think she tried to help Veronica from what I can see. So I would hope you would treat her with the same respect as you do the other, the rest of the family. I mean, they're all victims here. She's not getting to see her grandkids. Her great grandkids at that. If you took a moment to meet her, if you live in Hugoton and you take a moment to meet her, you'll be glad you did. <coughs> I know I was, and she tracked me down, and I was very glad to meet her. Again, if you guys find out anything, Somebody's texting me, when was I there? I was there. Let me look at the calendar. Let me tell you what. I spent every day busy as a bee. I went on that Tuesday. So I'll tell you the exact dates I was there. So this happened on March 30th. Melanie did a show on Monday night, which was April 1st. And I left early Tuesday morning. And I was there from April 2nd until April 12th. I, I didn't get home till like 3 o'clock in the morning back in Wichita. So I left on the 11th. But on the 11th, I went everywhere I'd went. And that whole time I'd been there, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 days I was there. First time ever I've not watched the women's Final Four. The men's final four basketball, and I'm big basketball person. So, um, to the person that just texted me about when I was there, I was there for 11 days. Let's see here. Rock, I heard Mr. Beasley cried. Yep. I already read that. Yeah. I bet he did. Let me just hit new comment. I just find it horrible. Like, why are they getting death threats and why are they getting the side eye and 
I mean, you're supposed to be a loving community. And if you were close to Veronica, you know that she went to court with Veronica a lot. Like, why, why would you be mean to her? I don't understand. I mean, granted, I don't know all the circumstances, but I believe the lady to be honest. And I believe what she's telling me. I want to see OSBI say they question Grice. I don't trust reporters. I don't trust reporters either. I mean, they are the same reporters that said that these women were shot. So, and they are the same reporters that had breaking news every day. Oh, the FBI is coming every day. The FBI is getting involved. I'm not trying to dog them. I'm just speaking truth there. How did they get so much money inheritance? I know that Tiffany's dad had a lot of money and a lot of land. Now, as far as Tad, you can look up his rap history. Uh, he's got a lot of charges in the past. So, you know what? Also, I haven't figured out how to look all this up unless I go there. But I'll figure it out. But would it surprise you that I wrote it down that on April 2nd, April 2nd. Now, mind you, these women disappeared on March 30th. Would it surprise you that Tad, on April 2nd, had some kind of custody hearing with his own kids? I'm trying to get a hold of that paperwork, but when somebody told me that, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, seriously? Like, was he trying to get his kids, or was it just, uh, somebody said it might have been something about where the kids are going to go to school type of issue, but he also had custody issue going on at the same time. I mean, if I was his ex, I'd be ooh, thanking my stars. He's locked up. Here we go. We lease our land for three years at a time, then reconsider releasing it. We are hardly ever on the land and would not be aware of anything weird was going down unless we went and inspected it. Exactly. And, you know, you assume when you lease the land, to say a farmer to do grow on it or you know plant their crop or keeping their cattle there I mean, you're you're really leasing it out you would expect them to do you right and do your land right i do know that there was a couple places i went that i didn't ask permission and they were last minute things i wasn't there very long i didn't drive my vehicle through their shit and didn't didn't break their stuff or anything and if they had come up to me, I just told them exactly what I was doing. When you're out there looking for two moms that could still possibly be alive. I mean, you know, I should have did it right. You know how much time it would take to go find out who owns all that land and try to track them down when I'm right there and I can just look? If I was on your land, I'm sorry. I can promise you I didn't tear anything up. I had a couple of farmers come up to me and say, well, I wouldn't mind if you were on my land. I said, well, we wouldn't even take the horses on your land. Like, we would walk. And they were like, well, your horses aren't going to hurt anything. We're not worried about your horses. We just don't want ATVs and, and four-wheelers on our land. I said, oh, I'd never do that. And I wouldn't. Like, I like my shit, too. And I like to take good care of my stuff. I mean, ask my husband about my shoes. I, I got a shoe. I got a shoe collection. Ask my friends if I have a shoe collection. I'm in love with shoes. And even my Hey Dudes, I got six pairs. So when I'm done wearing them for the day, they get wiped down, they get put back in their box. <coughs> you know, there's a lot of people that's that way with their hats. I mean, look at Patrick Mahomes. He's a shoe guy, too. You know, he, he wears them shoes and then he puts them back in the... He's got fancy holders than I do, but... I take care of my stuff. I would never misuse somebody else's stuff either. <coughs> Man, my throat's getting dry. Hold on a second. That's my key. I talk too damn much. Let's see here. At Rock Chalk. I made a call on this. Made a call on this, okay? Shit, CB Slinger, what was I talking about that you made a call on? I'm sorry. You know who I haven't seen in here for a minute, and I, I probably will sit down and give him a call tonight, is that Bradley Hoffman. You know, he really got fired up that night, and he told me, 
He called and apologized and said, there's no need to apologize. Sometimes you got to get fired up. Sometimes it takes getting fired up to get other people fired up. Droopy balls, you've been here for a while. Like, you know, you've made it to everyone. I saw the other day that you commented that you'd be happy to take me to some of these places I'm asking about. <coughs> I'm going to have to take you up on that offer. Uh, some of you might not want to be seen with me because I pissed some people off. I think they thought they was just going to play this off as a, in my opinion, it's my opinion. They were going to play this off as a sex trafficking type of thing and it was just going to go away. They thought they was in the clear. And then some girl shows up that's a YouTuber, which I'm not a, really wasn't a creator at that point. Did a couple shows. Um, but I do have a background. Law enforcement, well, families from law enforcement. So I know the difference between right and wrong. Rock, I will never forget the sound of your voice when you left. It broke my heart. It was hard to leave. I agree. It was really hard to leave. I did not want to leave till I found these women. That was for sure. It was hard. The rest of the family cannot control the actions of what another family member does. Believe me when I say I know the family is hurting also. People need to leave them alone. L, I agree. <coughs> I talked to the grandma. I love her. It makes me sad when she tells me she's getting death threats. Like, stop. Stop. <coughs> leave her alone. Let the lady grieve too. She cared about Veronica a lot. Jillian's husband. These people that are leaving messages on his Facebook, shame on you. <coughs> I find that horrible. And if you know if you know who they are, I showed I showed one of them. I'll pull them all up. It's not the first one. <coughs> if they're a friend of yours, I suggest you teach them a little lesson. I'm not saying beat them up or something, but I don't know how much you don't appreciate. The fact that they're harassing these families. I mean, my gosh. I saw I knew Heath was still in, in uh, the hospital. Use these families alone. But to put on there, and not only that, I don't even know that girl. She sure the hell wasn't out there. I was the only one searching at the time. And a couple of my friends went, and then a couple of days, I got a group of people together. And then that other YouTuber came, which I'm not even going to go there, but I'm just saying, who is this girl to say, why don't you thank the people that searched? I don't need him to thank me, okay? I did it out of the goodness of my heart, and it would break my heart for him to thank me. Like, just let him be. Let them be. Do better. Be better. It could be people I agree from around the world. Like that's why I don't let anybody on my on my Facebook. My Facebook's sacred to me and I'm not one that's got two thousand members on it. It's my friends and family. And yes, she's a good lady. I hope when you see her around town you let her know that you care about her. I'm sorry that she's going through all that. There is a guy who does true crime videos. He gets a lot of interrogation videos. Look to see. Are you talking about Drip Drop? Crime Circus? He's called Drip Drop. Crime Circus. I do follow him. And I haven't seen anything from him on this. So, And it would be a while before he got the interrogation. But I am a member of that channel. And uh, I'll hit him up and see if he can get it. But I know exactly who you're talking about. We know who Drip Drop is. Crime Circus. Mm. Back to the comment that the judge made about being such good friends, spending time together over the last couple of weeks, every morning having coffee, and not just was a good friend, is a good friend. Yeah, he corrected himself. I'm not going to say he was my friend. He is my friend. Oh, okay. Fired. I'd have fired you too. 
According to the Oklahomian this evening, the Emmy stated the two women were not shot. Yeah, we got that. Mm-hmm. I think I've caught you up on everything. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Rock, I've always loved that when someone says, do better. Be a better person. That's right. Treat people the way you want to be treated. You know, if you want to be treated like shit, then you're just not a good person. But yeah. And I would say the same thing about Wrangler. We don't know what Wrangler knows, what he don't know. What I know that I've seen in the court papers is he was trying to get help Veronica get to see her kids more. Um, his mom threatened to shoot him in the head. That was in court papers. I wish I lived close enough to stand outside court with a crowd. That crowd was way too quiet. Yeah, I was disappointed. I so wanted to go. They didn't even fill the courtroom. They were prepared to have 50 people in the courtroom. And they were prepared to, uh, contend, can, you know, handle the crowd outside. Especially when they know they got to walk right by us. And to Clint, the dad, Veronica's dad, I don't blame you. I have tried to go after every one of them, too. But don't get yourself thrown in jail, buddy. We all feel your pain. Talked to him a couple times. As a matter of fact, he came out one day and for the search, and there was a spot, and I think him and his lady went and looked in that spot. They took off. So even he was out there. Her mom was out there, Amanda. We walked through a field together. Don't judge. Don't judge these people. Usually, usually in a search, they prefer the family not search. And for obvious reasons. Everyone needs to leave that poor 16-year-old. Be quiet and quit asking where these children are, period. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That girl's going to need a lot of help and a lot of support. You know, I, I will say this. I'm not a big DCF fan, but hopefully they up their game in a lot of things and make sure that these, all these kids are taken care of and in the correct places where they should be. Let's see here. And, you know, it's a shame because it seems like Veronica reached out for help and did the judicial did the judicial system fail her? I don't know. Don't know. How does somebody turn to doing this? I don't know. I know everybody told me that she would do do anything for her kids. I believe it too. Yeah, fact checker. Are you somebody new? It's good to see you. Anyway, guys, unless somebody has something else to say or anything, I'm going to drop the link in case a local or somebody wants to come up. You're more than welcome to come up and say a few things. Otherwise, we'll shut the show down for the night. Um, please feel free to message me on that burner phone. And I will get back to you. Like, I try to answer every one of them. Yeah, the court is small. Like, literally, maybe two to four foot wide aisles. Yeah. As it said they could hold 50 people, and they had, like, 32 there. So, I get it. But my deal would be outside. I don't know if you guys watched it, but they were asking them, why did you do this? And that would be me. How dare you? And then I'm also the person that sometimes thinks prison's too good for them. You know, some countries, they do away with you like you do away with somebody. So, you get caught stealing, they cut your hands off. Wrangler may be much better now. Finally away from Granny's son. I agree. She controlled the money. She controlled everything. Um, it's still going to be heartbreaking to him. I mean, it's his mom. He's going to have a tough time adjusting, but I have every 
every faith in his grandma and his dad's going to step up and really help him throughout all this. The way I understand it, before this happened anyway, when he got out of rehab, he was going to go stay with his grandma for a while. So, let's see here. There was something here. Some older people are naive, and Cole was a respected man in town. Cole wanted to cut down a tree, move some concrete. He asked him a couple days before. Hmm. Cole's the one that had the smirky grin, right? I, I believe Mr. Beasley was a good guy. Um, Cole was really smirky. You know, and there's, I still had three people on my list. Yes, I was looking for the women, but I talked to a lot of people. There's three people still on my list that I haven't seen arrested. So we'll see if, if my intuition was right. I have faith that other than the fact that that one guy, that one guy that was head of the task force and stole money and then he faked a robbery or burglary and got indicted and couldn't be law enforcement, had to give up his his police cert certification. And then now he's like the head of the task force, the drug task force. How does that happen? Night, folks. Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you to the whole team. This isn't Rock's show. This is everybody's show. Yeah, I did. Sure did. She didn't recognize me. Bet if, I, uh, if I'd have talked, she would have. I was at the uh, Dollar General in Hugotson, and I was asking a lady a question. Three ladies came around the corner and said, you're rock chalk. I know your voice. So, I really pray Wrangler gets healing and becomes a better father for his children. They need him in their lives. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I could be wrong. Somebody correct me. Doesn't he? I think he has another child, even not just him, too. Yes, I will rest up. <coughs> Guess his eye healed. Still coughing up dirt, if you can believe it. When Brian Hinton was out there the other day, I was like, oh gosh, I remember when I was out there and it was 60 mile an hour dirt. <coughs> and I still haven't healed from it. Let's see here. Oh, I'm so suspicious of everyone. Yeah, you kind of got to be. Also, Wrangler lost the mother of his children. Yeah. You know, he cared about her. Well, you know, one kid, you know, might be a one night stand an accident. Two kids. I mean, there was some love there at some point, I think. And sometimes girls like bad boys. My kids would have never got away with that. I'll just tell you right now. This was a place to be for breaking news on this horrific case. It still is. Thank you. I do my best. The team does their best. We're not perfect, that's for sure. But we're damn sure not going to blow smoke up your butt. That one guy is shady as hell. Yeah. Okay, there you go. I was commenting on a previous question about Mr. Beasley. Yeah, I... Firmly believe Mr. Beasley had no part of this. Rock chalk. I feel the same way. Heard he didn't want the kids and remarried to another woman. Thank you. Later. I don't. I don't know about that, but I do know that I thought he had another kid. If we're still talking about Wrangler, I don't know that I'd say he didn't want his kids. Seems like Grandma just kind of took over. Good night, Rock. Good night, Mods. All rock stars, thank you so much. Well, thank you. We're here for you. Okay. Well, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and close it down for the night. We'll go live again sometime tomorrow. Is the evenings better for you guys? I'm just, I'm curious. What do you think about the evenings? Is that better? Oh, his present wife was pregnant? Oh, wow. Mm. 
Well, let's just hope he does the right thing. He gets clean and continues to to do better. I don't want to, you know, keep people up too late. I don't want to hit you during dinner time. <clears throat> so do you think around 7.45 is a good time? Does that seem to work for you guys? Yes, evening's okay. Good night, all praying for you. Continued healing rock. Thank you very much. Okay, good. At least I know evenings. That's awesome. Sometimes I will try to do it a little bit later because uh, one of our main mods, and, and of course we're all the same, but she works her ass off. She works third shift. So if I do it during the day, she's sleeping. If I do it too early in the evening, you know, she, she's a newlywed. Not that that matters, but she's newlywed. And she's got to have time for her husband. So I do try to work around her. And she makes sure she's available. And she don't like missing out. So if, if 7.45, 8 o'clock is a good time, that's what we're going to try to continue to do. Keep sending me all the stuff you guys have. I will say this like I say every time. We got love for those who love us. And hopefully you have a good evening. Get some good rest. And I would say around 7.45 tomorrow night, we'll meet again. Until then, take care. If you run into that grandma. Let her know she's loved. I hate it that they're getting threats. If you see anything on any Facebooks that's horrible like that, like send them to me. We'll track them down. We'll, we'll expose them. I'm not going to allow it. We're not going to keep re-victimizing these victims. That's ridiculous. They're going through a lot. Thank you for being here. Absolutely, everybody. Thank you for being here. And let's see here. I just want to make sure. Much love. Central time. Yes, central time. Right. Well, here we go, guys. Till tomorrow. Have a good evening. Hope you get rest well.